Today is the 24th of June, 2011. My name is Wayne Clark. We are at the New York State Military Museum and Veterans Research Center in Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? My full name is Eli Lee Deitch, D-I-E-T-S-C-H. I was born on the 24th of February, 1928, in Detroit, Michigan. Did you attend school in Detroit? Yeah, I graduated from, <clears throat> from Cooley High School in Detroit. What year did you graduate? Uh, I graduated in January 1946. And um, did you go on to college at that point or did you go to Well, work? Uh, yes I did, but out in California. We, my, family, my father had passed away some years before and my mother, rather than move to Florida, decided on California where some of the other family had moved. So I moved there and I went to junior college at what was then John Muir Junior College. It's now just a high school. And then from there I went up to the University of California at Berkeley, graduated. Mm -hmm. What did and you get? Continued your on with a master's degree. What did you get your degree in? I'm a zoologist, I'm a fishery biologist oh. by trade. And once you graduated, what happened next? Did you go into the service? Did you go to work? Well, look, I graduated in 1950 and it was just a few days after that that the Korean War broke out. But I had a deferment to go into um, graduate school for two years. After that, uh, after two and a half years, in it, I was inducted into the Army. You were drafted? No, I enlisted for you three enlisted. years. Why did you pick the Army? I really don't have any idea <laughs> at the moment. I don't have any idea, but I guess they gave me something, offered me something that uh, intrigued me, and that was entering the Army Security Agency. Hmm. Now where did you go for your basic training? Well, I went to the old cavalry school at Fort Riley, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And what was, what was that like? Well, it was just an eight-week cycle. I mean, I, the regular infantry cycle is 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. But if you're in some special field like Hook Baker Radio, uh, whatever, which I was with the Army Security Agency, uh, the second eight weeks is your other school. I see. In training, at least that's the way it was presented to us at the time. Now, did you go to uh, your additional schooling? Was that on the same That course? was at Fort Devens, Massachusetts. Fort Devens, all right. <clears throat> and, and tell us about that training. What was it like? What did you learn there? Well, I was... Uh, in cryptography. Mm -hmm. I, I say it, I, it was that we dealt, I was called a radio traffic analyst as opposed to a cryptographer, but we dealt with a message heading. The cryptographers dealt with the bulk of the message, the message bulk itself. And uh, the, the objective really was to uh, determine order of battle information, really. Mm -hmm. To put it together with information from DF, from uh, idle chatter that was illegal, you know, in the Army. But, you know, if the operators might uh, chatter and uh, give information on morale or the unit or what. Mm -hmm. In other words, we put this together and uh, tried to uh, put together an order of battle in front of us. Mm -hmm. In other words, who were you facing? And so forth. So that was a that was main, main thing, you know. I mean, we were taught a variety of things, you know, including cryptography, a little bare minimum, you know. We didn't mm -hmm. deal with things like the German Enigma machine, which the Cryptographers did, but we were also given a course in Russian, a brief course. I was going to ask you that. Did did you uh, pick up the Russian language? 
I know, you know, I mean, this was so, so simple. We had a, a sheet, a code sheet, which told us how to, you know, if you knew the rudiments of the English language and other foreign languages, uh -huh. subject, to, <laughs> verb, and so forth, I mean, you know, you could yourself, with the aid of a dictionary, translate. I see. So, you know, that was it. Of course, I wasn't supposed to talk about this for ten years after I uh, left the service. But we were actually attached to the uh, National Security Agency. Mm -hmm. And the, the Navy and the Air Force uh, had their uh, counterintelligence agencies too. I mean, you know, similar to doing what, what they were doing similar things, you know, as we mm -hmm. were. So well, that, that was about it, and I, while I was there, I was asked if I wanted to become an instructor, and so you accepted. Okay. So your grades must have been high enough once you got through the course, they wanted oh, yeah, to I be was, an instructor. I, was, I don't know, second or third in the class, I don't mm -hmm. know. So you became an instructor there at Fort Dell? I think that, plus I had a college degree background, you know. Now what rank were you? Well. I think it was Specialist Second Class. Probably Specialist Fourth. I don't... Well, it's equivalent to a sergeant. That's all. E5. Okay. E5. Uh, that's oh. all I know. Okay. That... I, today, I don't know what it is, you know. Yeah, it, it would have been what they call a Specialist Five, which was equal to a sergeant back then. But, you know, I don't know. It was an E5 pay grade. Yeah. Uh, I think they call it second class, but I don't know. I can't. I can't remember now. All right. I'd have to go look at my, you know, mm -hmm. DD two fourteen or whatever it is. Now, did you spend the rest of your time in the service at, at Devons? Yeah, right. I, I was. I was there all the time. I met my first wife there. And we were married in August of fifty five, and I got out of the service in March of fifty six. Now, did they offer you anything to stay in? No, they didn't. I bought, I enjoyed what I was doing, and I, you know, I had my degrees in college, and I, I don't know, you know, I didn't know what, I had no idea what I was going to get paid for a job, you know, I'm married. Now, did, did any government agencies approach you? Well, I, I thought of going with the NSA down in Washington, you know. Mm -hmm. But because I had no practical field experience, I knew I was just going to get a GS-5, which is what I wound up getting when I went with the Fish and Wildlife Service mm -hmm. uh, down at Woods Hole. I, you know, I, I don't know. I thought about it, and I've thought about it a lot since, you know, because I kind of really enjoyed the work. We had a, a fellow that, uh, was drafted that worked for the NSA, you know, before he entered the Army, and they brought him up uh, as an instructor in our unit. Mm -hmm. But he trained as an MP, and so they had him on the street, down in Georgia somewhere, you know, and he was yeah. being trained on the streets of Atlanta directing traffic. <laughs> now, how, many, how many people were in your, your unit? There at Devons. Well, we had we were a, a double company. We had I, I don't know there was the instructor portion and then there was like a support portion. Mm -hmm. But it was I don't know I think probably over six hundred people. We had three or four officers. Mm -hmm. And, and know, then just just instead of two, you know. Mm -hmm. Commander and exec, you know, we, we had a couple, three officers. Mm -hmm. And then how, how big were the classes of students that came through? Oh, not over 30, I would, I would expect. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine they were all, all probably very intelligent to be in that course? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we were considered to be uh, among the upper echelon of the Army, you know, in other words, like, I, I tell people, you know, look, I said, in our barracks we had TVs. We, 
couldn't erect an antenna on the barracks, but we could have the rabbit ears inside. Uh -huh. Everything had to be clean and neat, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, hmm. you know, they didn't let you go astray, let's put it that way. Okay. And uh, so forth. We had a Class A pass on, on and off the post. We never did KP. We had a big uh, repo depot mm -hmm. of incoming students, you know, that which were for a variety of MOSs in the Army. It was just, I was just in one of them. Mm -hmm. So that they performed KP and they did a lot of other work, you know, or whatever was. Did you have to uh, pull guard duty at all? Or? We finally did. Uh, they made us uh, do, uh, you know, sergeant and corporal of the guard. Mm -hmm. I did it once. I, I never did KP at Devons. I did it in basic training and that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I mean, you know, my life was entirely different probably than the regular army. Uh -huh. Now, were you issued a, a weapon at all? Well, uh, we had weapons. In other words, every year we had to qualify. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of rifles? Carbine. The M1 carbine? M1 carbine, yeah, that was my basic weapon, supposedly. Uh -huh. But they were housed always in the uh, supply. And they cleaned them. We, uh, you know, I, we uh, didn't do much of anything, really. Mm -hmm. Did you have to qualify at all with the 45? No, no, no. Okay. So uh, you, you were discharged from the Army, and uh, did you make use of the GI Bill at all? At that no, I had, I had my degrees and everything. Mm -hmm. I know some people used it to buy like a home. And no, not at the time. I didn't. I, I don't even know whether what was available to me, mm -hmm. say, in uh, that type of circumstance. I, I don't have any idea. I, I know I had two kids, yeah. ultimately. And now, uh, um, when you you were married while while you were in the service, yeah, towards right. the end. I was married in August of 1955. I got out in March of 1966, and I lived off post. Oh, I see. Okay. From uh, from the time I was married on, I mean, I didn't live on post. Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, Stay in contact with anyone you were in service with? No, not really. I haven't. I had one uh, fellow from uh, California send me a couple of Christmas cards. He got married afterwards, but no, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. So you probably never attended any sort of reunions or no, and I have, you know, I'm a member of the American Legion for maybe 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a few attempts, you know, to find or locate ASA people. Yeah. You know, not, they weren't, you know, for my time, you know, of service, but I called one fall and I said, were you having much luck? And he said, no, not really. Mm -hmm. And I, I have met, I met one while I was uh, working for the New York uh, Conservation Department. He was Mike Delaney down in uh, Delaware County. Mm -hmm. He was an avid uh, radio ham and so forth, and he had been in the service with the ASA. Mm -hmm. But I, we never talked much about it. I don't know. We kind of laughed at here we are, you know, way out here, you know, and, and I, I don't know, he was much younger than I was, so I don't know. Uh -huh. Now, are you a ham radio operator yourself? No, no, I have nothing to do with radio or anything about it. Okay. All right. Yeah. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Oh, I don't know, really. I, I guess I was kind of like everybody else, kind of glad to have it behind me, you know, and mm -hmm. move on with my life, really. Mm -hmm. You know, I was married and I, I don't know, I, I guess uh, in the army you don't speak your piece so well, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I guess I wanted to, to be able to say what I thought when uh -huh. I wanted to. 
But overall, it was a, it was a good experience. Oh, overall, look, I, I mean, I had a life that was unlike anybody else's. If, you know, that's gone through the army, uh, you know, gone through combat or anything of that nature. We had people that came back from Korea mm -hmm. that had been there, you know, and, uh, you know, I just remember the one fellow talking about, you know, he said, like, he said, all the units are rotated up on line now. We had units on front line, but it was, uh, as I know it, mostly voice intercept. Mm -hmm. We had people that knew the Korean Chinese language and so forth. And there was uh, also the intercept operators that were functioning, you know, for Morse code transmissions and things like that. I, but I don't have any real experience with it. Mm -hmm. But I, I, he was kind of funny one time in the barrack. He said, you know, he said the Turks, when they rotated up front, he said they went up in their full battle dress. They believed they, they would meet their maker and they wanted to be dressed, you know, properly. So he said the Canadians came up, you know, the band playing the Maple Leaf forever. He said, but when the GIs came through, he said, they were up to their ankles in mud, they were swearing, there was no band, <laughs> but he said, they went and they fought. Uh -huh. And I said... Hmm. Any, uh, any other humorous incidents at all that you can recall? No, I, you know, I mean, it was very routine, you know, life. I, you know, and I had a good life. My, as I say, I had a class A pass on and off post. Mm -hmm. I Did went over to Lowell all the time where my wife, you know, when we, when we were dating and so forth. And mm -hmm. They had a place um, in the Y there that you could, GIs could stay overnight for, I don't know, two bucks or something, you know. I'd stay overnight, uh, Saturday night. We go somewhere, you know, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Around, I, I don't know. I, you know, it was just, you know, and pretty soon I'd get the train back to Lowell, or I mean, the fair, you know, yep. on the post. And uh, no, I, it was uh, actually a lot of ways better than college. You know, <laughs> I didn't have to face exams. I didn't, uh -huh. you know, there was no real pressure. You know, I'm. Some of the fellows, you know, they made sergeant instead of specialist. I happen to know that I'm not the supervisory type. Mm -hmm. I'm not that type of person, you know. I, but I like to work and I like to do. Mm -hmm. How long have you been retired now? Oh, I retired, what, 83? Oh, so you've been retired uh, Yeah, a well, they... I was in then in what they called Tier 1 in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. And they were paying the full shot for my uh, retirement. And they wanted to get rid of us. So they gave me three years credit to go and I took it. Mm -hmm. I said, why not? Well, and there was a lot of other reasons. My wife, first wife had passed away with cancer. My mm -hmm. mother had died a couple years before that. I lost my dog. My two kids got married and I said, where am I? Yeah. I want to find myself. And I'm, I've been married again for 27 years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add to, before we close? Well, there's not much that I can add, you know, I mean... Did you ever have any uh, USO shows come by the post at all? Well, they had I, they had a USO place up uh, like a club at the headquarters. No, it was open. Uh -huh. I went a couple times and you know to see what they had in the way of dances up there. But uh, you know, it was mo We had the on post the two hundred and seventy sixth. Regimental combat team, you know, mm -hmm. and it was mostly black. Yeah, I was going to ask if the if uh, 
the uh, units were still segregated back then. No, they weren't. No, they I mean, were. we had when I went through basic training, we had a couple colored people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in our uh, uh, organization, we didn't have any that I know of. You know, in the ASA. Mm -hmm. But there was. They brought these girls in from Boston. They came in on the bus and went. Uh, I said, geez, you know, there's just not that much here for me, you know. Yeah. I I had met my wife at the USO. And that that might be a bit of humor. I could say one of my buddies from California. He had met her earlier. Mm -hmm. And it was the time when they knew they were going home for two weeks before they uh, went anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. uh, overseas. They, they were destined for the for FECOM, the Far East Command. And Kreider got loaded on the street, <laughs> walking around drinking beer. And he had stood my wife up. He was supposed to go up to the beach to a, some kind of a beach party anyway. And I had, uh, he, he didn't know it, but my wife's good friend was the girlfriend of my of the, a company exec officer, and he found out where Kreider went. <laughs> so she asked him, you know, and he was in his sort of stupor, you know, <laughs> what, you know? He says, "Here, take her, go." And from then on, I mean, we we went out, you know, uh -huh. and uh, Ellie got married and. Kenny Skinner, uh, was he was the exec officer. He got married to Shirley, the, the other girl, and I don't know, he wound up, he was a school teacher by trade anyway. Mm -hmm. Gone to, out to Fitchburg State Teachers College, I guess. Now, did you stay in contact with them or did your wife? No, my wife did a little bit, but not really, not at, yeah. while we were in, uh, Massachusetts, I guess, yes. But once we moved to New York, no, not really. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The other people, you know, I went back, I, I don't know, I, I got a week's duty up at the uh, fish pier to uh, replace his sea sampler while he was on vacation. And I went back to Fort Evans, and I really knew nobody. Yeah. There was one fellow that was there, and he had met this other girl at, at my wedding, and they got married. Uh -huh. But I said, where's Larry Thorne, you know? And he said, well, he's in uh, Japan again, he and his wife. You know, I, you know it's like everybody that I really kind of knew was gone, you know? Yeah. As, I mean, George Nays was, uh, he had been in the army, he had been in Asmara in Somalia, I guess, or Eritrea it is. And he got out of the service, and like a lot of people, they couldn't find jobs at that time, it was a little difficult. And he re-entered the service. And I know, you know, I heard all these stories, you know, when we were, in my class, you know, but all of a sudden, yeah. I saw some of them came back, one or two that came back from Korea and re-enlisted. They said, I can't get a job. If you re-enlisted within 90 days, you could retain your rank. Right. As I recall, and some came back as sergeants and you know, stayed that way, you know. Yeah. Another fellow wanted to get on the state police, That's, that was his goal, you know. Mm -hmm. He'd been in IBM work. Of course, you know, IBM then was all punch cards and everything in those days. I mean, I have no idea what goes on today. I have no idea. It's probably far more sophisticated. Oh, I'm sure. You know, but we had another fellow came back from Germany. And he said he was uh, riding it with his intercept equipment 
in boxcars, you know, through the Russian zone to Berlin, between the American zone and uh, Berlin. Hmm. You know, that's a pretty risky business. Sure. But as I, as the war wound down and the need for uh, people in the Far East abated, all of a sudden, you know, there were other offers coming through. We had a fellow that went to Madrid, Spain, in the embassy, but he was an intercept operator. Mm -hmm. And we had people going to Hawaii, White Sands in Mexico, all over. All of a sudden, you know, they, they were beginning to open up in other places. But uh, when I graduated, it was Far East Command, <laughs> that yeah. was it, TCOM. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So that's, no, that's about what I can say, you know, really. Okay. You know, I mean, my life in the barracks, as I said, I described, you know, we had GI parties, we had to keep things clean. I, I worked nights, so, you know, I slept during the day. The officers never disturbed me while I was sleeping, but they always inspected the barracks. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember them coming through hearing them, you know. Yeah and so forth. We had, uh, this is when we had a lot of students. And I went over to what they called, I think it was A branch, I don't know. But anyway, there was the intercept operator, but we taught them a little bit of what we did. Mm -hmm. And that was my job at night. But we taught uh, five and a half days a week. Saturday morning was inspection before you went to work. Everybody that lived off post had to get, go through the inspection too. Mm -hmm. So forth. So they cut you loose around noon time and then did a report back like Monday morning? Or? Yeah, we got out of school at noon. <laughs> you just grab your pass and go, you know. Mm -hmm. We get in our civvies, as we call it, you know, civilian clothes and go. And you know, when they had, uh, when you were in the school companies, they had bed check doses every now and then. Mm -hmm. It was never, you know, every night, but every now and then the commanding officer would go through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, when I went through basic training, I don't know, when we went through several interviews while we were there, you know, and we were, oh, you're ASA, yeah, you know. I'm getting out of things, you know. <laughs> but they, some of the fellows, they lived close to where we did, and they could see us when we fall off in the street, you know, and so forth. And he said, look, he said, you got one of the worst companies, you know, for basic training. But I went to the 10th Mountain Division, which is up at uh, oh, yeah, Trump. Fort Drum, was Fort at Fort Riley, Kansas. And the old barns, the old horse barns were there. I went through machine gun training in one of them, hmm. you know. It was a miniature course, you know, I had a miniature thing you shot at. But, you know, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. No, it's just a time in your life. That's the way I look at it now. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for your interview. Okay.